start to go, bro. You could see them like, oh my god, like, oh, oh, oh. oh! Yo, 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 uh, and we're back from the hiatus, the vacation. Holy shit, dude, Giza, are those your tits? Bro, did I get implants Damn, over the last dude. break? What is going on right now? Calm down, bro. I got him out for y'all. Look at that. Doom, do, 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 to the music. Doom, 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 doom. Boom, 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 boom. And we're back. What's up, guys? Fiend City Podcast. Episode, what are we at? 14 on hell? Where are we picking up? We're in the double digits, guys. We're up there. Uh, we're there. Yeah, we're, I think, 14. Yeah. I think we're 14. So we're getting back, guys. Sorry for the break. We just needed some time off. I needed some time off, not on hell. He was busy, too, but it was meant... Mostly me. I needed a little break, man. I had a lot going on. Um, I had a. I was on the road a lot. It was my birthday. Um, I have some stuff going on with work. There was just a ton of stuff going on, and we just needed a little bit of time. And we actually tried. We tried to meet up and record when Maverick was here, and that was. I was just not in the best place mentally, man. We got. We tried to record a podcast three times. We've never restarted. Every time we've done an episode, I'm really like proud of that. We've always started recording. We've never had a stop. And be like, oh, let's restart this. This feels like that was the one time where I was like, yo, this feels weird. Like, yeah, we're gonna have to restart. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. So, and we did get about thirty plus minutes into an episode, and I still was like, yo, this ain't it. So, um, we tried, guys. We tried. We tried to meet up with on hell a few times, and we were just busy. We each had shows or something was going on when we wanted to record. So. We are sorry, but we're back, and we have a ton of stuff to discuss because it's been a couple weeks, and I've been all over the place. Hell yeah, yeah, dude, everywhere, man. Yeah, like, I can't believe. I, oh man, I don't even know where you want to start. Like, um, uh, where, where, where have you come? Where, where, where are you coming back from right now? Like, okay, so I just just came back from the Four Corners Festival in Durango, which was like, gosh, man, for being, um, you know, it was the Four Corners Comedy Festival, in Durango, Colorado. And it was the first time I was on a festival where it was a bunch of my friends that I haven't seen in months and years. People that I started comedy with that all live in different states now. This is the first time I had a festival experience where I went, saw a bunch of friends, was on a great show, got added to another great show, had two sets that I was very happy with, and then just had a blast with my buddies after. It was probably the funnest thing ever. Um, I drove up there with other other comedian, Steph Darnell. He was probably my, I think he's my... Uh, second or third guest so check out that episode so i drove up there with steph it was his first time out in durango performing and he went before me um he actually opened kind of opened the show he's like the second comic to go up and he crushed his set nice. i was so proud of him like he really went in man he had an awesome set we were doing short sets i think it were like eight to ten minutes um but he had a great set i went up a little bit more towards the end i think i was like two before the headliner and I had a set that I was very happy with. Durango is just a magical town when it comes to comedy, man. I don't know. Something about their audience. They come out. They're ready to laugh. And that was the first place where I was like, that's where you want to bring, perform and bring some fun stuff because they're ready to enjoy it. Like, they're ready for the jokes. They're ready for the ride. Right away, I started making fun of the town a little bit. And they were, like, loving it, which is, like... I mean, in Albuquerque, I, and at Revel last week, at a roast battle, I tried to make fun of a table, and they almost shot me with a revolver. Right. So it's a little bit different. Sour faces, <clears throat> heads down, what's going on? Yeah, just <laughs> dirty bourbon looks. I was not about it. <laughs> just just uh, dudes that look like they came from riding the mechanical bull at Dirty Bourbon. They're trying to stare me down in right. their Carhartt shirts. It's too much. So, But, du yeah, Durango was amazing. And then we got added to a late-night show. It was a dirty show. There was supposed to be... um. It was already set up. I wasn't on the show. Steph wasn't on the show. And um, we, you know, had a couple of drinks after the show. And then we got asked, like, hey, do you guys want to do a set on the late show? And, I mean, if you guys know me, I rarely drink before my sets. And even a super light drinker, period. You know, I'll have, like, two, and I'm buzzing. I've seen them get tipsy on wine. Yeah, for real. A glass. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I had about three drinks before they even asked me if I wanted to do the show. Of course, I said yes. It was a, you know 
blast. It was out on the a patio of a bar in Durango. I'm actually, um, perfect plug, I'm actually going to be going back and headlining a show October 25th at the same bar. So um, it was. I'm happy I got to do a little set there and kind of get the vibe for it. So it was um, on the patio. There was probably 50 people on this little patio stacked in. And, um, and it was a dirty show. So they were ready for some laughs. They were ready to get wild. Um, Steph once again knocked his set out of the park. Did almost just crowd work. And some of the best crowd work I see my homie do, man. He knocked it out of the park. Like every person he touched on, he was hitting right. And I... Um, I actually went right after him on the second show and picked up right where he left off. We we already kind of did our material the at, you know the theater show and both me and Steph really aren't the dirtiest comics. Um, more of our stuff's observational. It's really kind of stuff about us growing up, stuff like that. And um, so I you know did a bunch of crowd work as well and had a blast. I ended up taking my shirt off at the end of the show. Oh yeah. But you know what? This is what I regret. I'm gonna be honest with you. Tits out. Got the tits out. Yeah, you freaking yeah. looking really bad. What was it, bro? Jesus. Wild out here. Jesus. I know. You could literally wash your delicates on that ripple right Jesus, there. Jesus, so, bro. Just see um, man plates there. Yeah, so. Uh, Super Saiyan. But this Calm is the thing. So I did take my shirt off, and it was fun because, like, the audience responded. They were having a blast. I was having a blast. But I got shy, like, immediately. I <laughs> mean, I, for real, for as much as I work out for the ticket, I literally bro, right I got away. shy <laughs> immediately. Like, I maybe had my shirt off for five no longer than 10 seconds before I was fully off stage. And and the thing is, I like Josh is like, dude, you should have milked that. He's like, you could have like really went in. He's like, you could have like done a whole performance off of it and probably gotten like tipped yeah. and you could have gotten some laughs. He's like, you could have, you should have stretched that out. So I still need to get comfortable in different areas on stage. I mean, not that I'm always taking my clothes off when I'm doing comedy, but still, it still goes to show you how you could be in the pocket and something be going good, a bit be going good, and you still like pull out too early. Yeah. And so that's like the one thing I was like, oh man, I wish I would have like stretched that out a little bit more. Nice. But um, it ended up being the fun, bro. We danced the night away. Like I saw buddies I haven't seen in so many. Yeah, that was a blast. So that was the last thing I was coming from. And I think where we left off was right around my birthday. I think that was my birthday week. Yeah. Um, 32 32 spins around the sun shout out hell yeah Happy still birthday if anybody is out there yeah virgo's out there just chilling so um yeah man it was just another learning experience that's all it really was like that's what i took from coming into this next year is kind of like refocusing and prioritizing and once again becoming more professional in my comedy and kind of getting out of things that take a time away from what's really important i guess dude are important people that take time your time away because it's really easy to get like caught up in priorities that aren't yours in in a way i know he's not trying to brush on the subject but you know stuff happens and it was just a, a little <laughs> hiccup in the road bro a little, a little hiccup. hiccup in the road bro sometimes people aren't aren't meant to be in the in the journey bro they come along for one bus stop and that's it so it is what it is you're still out there man having fun and that's what it's all about yeah so that was the birthday, a lot of learning experiences, but you know what ended ended up, I ended up feeling like a way, like it was the first, everybody was like, you feel older? Like everybody always asks when your birthday, you know, I guess that's when you're six, but I do feel a little bit different uh, going into this year as well. And I think my focus has just changed a bit. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of really good opportunities in comedy and I really need to focus on that because the ball rolling, like it took me almost five years to get somewhat of momentum that I was hoping for. And I feel like this is my time where I could roll with it or I could just get comfortable and be that Albuquerque comedian that runs a show forever. Yeah. And um, for as much as I love performing comedy in the city, in the state, my goals are, are bigger than that. Yeah. And I want to perform in clubs across the country and I want to do stuff overseas here and there and I want to make this a career. That's my goal. So I think now that I've gotten to this point here in comedy and where we are in this, you know, locally, I think I need to make a jump before I get a little too comfortable. And um, it's kind of scary to think about. I've never not lived in Albuquerque. I've never not lived in New Mexico. Um, but it's something that I know is eventually going to be another growth in my life and it's something I think is going to be important. So that's kind of where my head's at. Coming from a perspective like that, I'm kind of in that boat with you. I've never left either and stuff. Do you yeah. think we're taking too long? 
I think, I mean, yeah, there is a way. I've had a lot have of, left when we were 20. <laughs> bro, like, I, you know, I have buddies in other places. It's all about going where the opportunities. Like, my Durango buddies jumped to Denver, and it took them about a year, a year or so to get cooking, and now they're rolling with it. Yeah. And my buddies in Phoenix, luckily, there's a lot of great opportunities out there, but they stuck in the pocket, and now they're rolling with it. Um, in Albuquerque, we've, we've maxed out opportunities. I'm create, trying to create opportunities by running shows, but... Every time I produce a show, it takes so much time away from me writing and working on developing my own craft, yeah. and which is really my goal. I love putting on shows for New Mexico because it's my favorite thing to see audiences come out and, and enjoy a comedy show. And it's my favorite thing to put my buddies on and see them kill. It gives you a different feeling. When you kill, it's the best feeling, right? Yeah. But when you put together a show and the audience is enjoying it, your homies on stage killing, and you kind of, you know... Are, are kind of the um, the glue between all that. It gives you a different kind of gratification. So I do enjoy that, but my goal is the craft and the end goal and really making this a career and growing this platform. And this podcast is a beginning step to that. We always talk about that. So a lot going on, bro. That was kind of the, you know, the shift in the birthday and the shift in the focus. So now we're redirecting. And right after that, I actually had a trip that kind of made all that kind of go away and made me realize what's important. So I did a show in Dolores, Colorado, which is a tiny little mountain town outside of Durango, smaller than Durango. Nice. I mean, if you if you're listening in New Mexico, we're talking this tiny town like Madrid. It's it's tiny. Like there's not much out there, but they had a nice little brewery. Um I got to headline a show. I got to bring Cody Dove to feature. Josh got to come and um special guest set. So two of my favorite people, hands down, we, you know, took a road trip. First time I ever cruised with Cody. I got to learn a lot about his past in comedy because as you know, um, we're going to bring him on. But if you haven't heard, listen to him on, on Hell's podcast, but he has an amazing 20 year professional run in comedy. And um, those trips with uh, with veterans like that, you have to pick their brains because you'll learn so much tips about being on the road, being in hotels being in different cities like how to get around in this comedy game is um it's important to know the insights yeah. so i enjoyed cruising with him the show was amazing it was outside at first on a patio but it started sprinkling it was a little cold so they moved everyone inside which i thought was perfect because they put it it made it like a comedy club atmosphere yeah because every it was about 40 to 50 people in, tight in this brewery um so it made it really intimate and they were about it, man. It was one of my favorite headlining sets of the year. I was really walked away, really happy with the performance, really happy with everything, the way the night went. And, um, gosh, I mean, we, and then we were actually staying in Cortez. So these are all like tiny little Southern Colorado, um, you know, kind of mountain towns. Cortez is a little different. Like if you all been in Durango, you know, it's like progressive college town, super liberal, um, and then 30 minutes away is Cortez, which is the opposite, yeah. conservative, rural, blue collar. Um, the first time I ever went there, I went to a bar after the show and there was like a 21 year old kid on with boots, with spurs on the boots, bro. <laughs> like it was a John Wayne movie or something. Right. It was wild. Both so sliding doors that were open. We, yeah, it was the one place I would go to a bar and I mean like, oh, I'm not like, well, welcome here. Like, for example, I ordered a drink and the... Bartender asked for my ID, not to check my age. She's like, "Can I see your ID?" Just because I don't know who you guys are. That's how small of a town it is. Like she knows, like she knows everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> so we were only there for a drink because the vibes were a little, a little not welcoming. But they invited us to another little small town bar. We ended up cruising over there. Josh uh, was there. Cody was there. A couple of the other comedians. A lot of the audience ended up going, so it was really fun. Okay. Um, and this bar was exactly what you want out of a small town bar bro you go in wood floors it's rowdy um you know what i mean they're serving like only beer and shots this is how i knew this is how i know i wasn't in albuquerque i was in a different town i ordered an old-fashioned which is my go-to that's my favorite drink not too fancy right? right but it's 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 a mixed drink for sure it's got some class yeah it's yeah so i'm a pretty prohibition gentleman when it comes down to it yeah. i live a pre-1920s lifestyle when I'm at a bar and I order a drink, I take it back. Discreet, you know what I mean? but still. I'm good. gentleman, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so anyway, I ordered an old fashioned and the bartender straight up looked at me and she goes, nah. She did that, but I've never, I couldn't believe it. She was like this. 
I was like, kind of old fashioned. Nah. And, I, and then immediately I snapped and I realized I was like, oh, you're in a small town bar. It's popping. This lady has two seconds. She's like, beer shot. What the fuck do you want? Yeah. So I was like, whiskey, whatever. Fucking do it up. So, um, you know, they're playing some music before that. You know, me and Josh, if y'all see our IGs, we love to be silly. We always are out dancing. Like, either whether it's just for fun, just to really get down and let loose. Like, we love that's our, my favorite. Obviously, you guys know I get down, but like, everywhere we go, they're playing music. We're going to get down a bit. And end of the night, they throw on a little bit like a, like a funk song, like James Brown or something. And, uh, the, of course, I do a set. So I go out there. I'm tired, bro. I got a couple drinks in me. I'm not trying to get like too wild. You know what I mean? Yeah. Slip and Cortez. I do no backflips. <clears throat> bro, so um, I do a little set. Josh goes out, does a little. You know, we do our thing. We're filming ourselves. What we do not expect is Cody Dove to go out. <coughs> so pull it up. It's on Josh's IG. So. Cody Dove goes out and shuts it down. And he shows why he's the improv master, bro. Because uh-huh. me and Josh are always doing it. Look, I love how you have it paused on Josh hitting a freeze and flipping. Like, who does Josh start to really think? Uh-huh. Let's really stop. Let's stop for a second. Who the fuck does Josh Fournier think he like, really is, is, this is, like an bro. album cover right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little does everyone know after this, he came up, he's like, I, I fucking popped my shoulder out of place doing this, bro. Uh-huh. I was like, dude, you're getting too intense. He's becoming a real b-boy. Look at this dude. Yeah, straight up deuced. I know. He's really fucking putting it out there. All right. So I go. I think you go back a little bit. I think it's already into it. So we'll play the whole clip, right? This is our thing. Look, right here. Watch. Pause it right here. Pause, pause. All right. This is the best part. This small town was rowdy, bro. They were getting faded, the locals. And there was like a pack of some, some banshees, bro. Some ladies, some local ladies out there that were really tearing it up if you know what i'm talking about and they were like yeah some coogs bro but they were more of uh that you know wolverine status Uh. so um dude it's it's so funny so i started dancing and this like older lady tries to come dance with me and you can literally see me like push her away (laughs) and we can't get it so i go josh goes and then and then i'm not gonna tell you what cody dove does before We'll just see because it gets wild and then we'll talk about it. Goes wet and wild. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, lady, get out of the way. Hey. Oh, man, that's so funny. I was buzzing, dude. I was like, just don't fall. That's what I was thinking. I had just popped my knee out like a week ago at a battle too, and I'm and then I'm doing this shit. My, no wonder why my knees are just thrash. Josh goes out looking like he's like asking for a dollars. <laughs> he almost ate it, dude. You can tell how much fun we have though. You can hear like the laugh, like you can see it, bro. Like, look at it. like you could tell how silly. He's such a fool. His little thunder. But this is what we didn't expect. Is Cody Dove going out looking like Inspector Gadget. <laughs> hitting the chair. Look and look at the shh. <laughs> give it up. Give it up for Mr. It was Bean, the sh- that what that got me, dog. Is the sh- But I wasn't expecting this. Oh yeah. He called one of the banshees up. Cody Dove, bro, got wild out in court. Me and Josh couldn't believe it. We fully couldn't believe it, dude. Look at these people. They're not. Look at. They're real. They're real. Look. And then Cody Dove didn't know what to do, bro. It's like this is getting too real. Once she brought the hippos out, he didn't know what to do. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, he literally was like, "Get away from me, you maniac!" <laughs> I remember. Oh yeah, he started dual wielding banshees. Dang, dude. <laughs> dual wielding. Oh shit, dude. This just goes to show you, bro, like, some of these nights, you never know what to expect, bro. We had so much fun. We laughed our asses off about that after. That's so funny. So that's Dolores, bro. Dolores, Colorado. Um, That was the first thing we did. That was our first hiatus. And that was one of the reasons we missed that first podcast. So that was the weekend. You know what I mean? We were supposed to shoot on Sunday. We got back kind of late. Boom. We missed a week. And then it kept rolling. Then a... We had a bunch of shows. Then Maverick came in the town that week. We had a Revel show. Yeah. We had a show 
Friday at Cities of Gold Casino, which was a killer. I mean, dude, Cities of Gold continues to be something I'm increasingly growing proud of. Like, the support we get from that area, um, the setup of the show, just everything, man. It is fun every time. They treat us so well. The audiences always come out. They're, they're some of the best audience. And it's the one audience in New Mexico that you're performing in front of, and they're just sitting there looking at you. They're not at a bar turned with their back with music playing in the other room half in half out on a pad you know what i mean it's a good setup so really proud of that maverick was there josh was there um we had carla on the show and who else oh and we had sammy anzer which i was really happy to have um, oh, okay, nice. a denver comedian and he you know what sometimes out-of-staters come dude and they have a hard time connecting with the audience that's what i've noticed after doing canteen for so long and Sammy came and just connected with this northern New Mexico audience, bro. And he, he had a killer set. And then we went to that bar after and danced the night away there, yeah. too. <laughs> Literally, dude. Him and his girlfriend were so cool. They got the full New Mexico treatment. We walked into the bar in the casino after. And they were playing mariachi, like live band, playing mariachi music. And Rachetta said, like, Mexican music. And then they would play... The DJ would like mix in like kind of like you know popular songs in between that, full on blast. The governor again, shout out. She is always supportive. She comes out, hangs out after the show. It really makes um. It really makes me grateful to like I said once again put on comedy here in New Mexico and see see these people and the outcomes and them come out. So Cities of Gold continues to be great. Our next show is going to be October twenty second. Which is in perfect lineup because it's the same week as Albuquerque Funny Fiesta. Yeah. yeah. So that is going to be Friday, right before the headliner show, which I'll get to because I'm really happy to announce something about that. But um, so that will be Friday. And I'm very happy because I got two more of my favorite Denver comedians coming on out. Um, I have Caleb Mulkey on the show. Um, it, this one's going to be another another fun one for sure these lineups continue to be great i'm really proud uh, buck d is going to be on the show nice so this one's a good mix of new mexico good mix of really top-notch denver comics um gosh man these are shows that are like club worthy shows i'm really proud of them so that's going to be october 22nd a friday night and then the very next night is going to be the night i perform on the albuquerque funny fiesta it's saturday the headliner night and i'm very very happy to announce that i'm one of the co-headliners of my own hometown comedy festival um i am ecstatic man I, you know i'm four and a half years and almost five years into comedy and to headline my hometown festival makes me really proud of like all the late nights the open mics the crowds of two people all the stuff we deal with you know what i mean yeah, the hard work yeah all the nights on the road bro this the, the floor full of energy drinks from trying to stay awake like <laughs> It really makes me grateful, and, and I know it's just our hometown fest, but it's still a big deal to me, for real. Um, so I'm excited to announce that I'm co-headlining co -headlining that with another comedian who I believe is an out-of-state comedian, because I didn't recognize her, but I'm excited to perform um, and, and see what she got. So, yeah, so definitely. You'll be seeing the promos here soon, right? Yeah, exactly. They're going to put out the packages, um, you know, give them a little bit of shout out. I will give them, a, you know, we'll cut the segment out for them. So yeah, so that is October 23rd saturday that's the headliner show for albuquerque funny funny fiesta of course it's going to be on all week they're going to be doing shows they're going to be doing a lot of online panels and segments and workshops so even if you're not in state like if the if you know any of the colorado or arizona homies listening you could tune into some of the online stuff um there's a lot going on but like i said that saturday october 23rd is the headliner show co-headlining that and they actually are giving away a ticket package so um you know follow this i'll throw the link on and we'll figure out how you guys could like get some free tickets if you want to check out the show yeah it's gonna be fun guys it's gonna be really sick so yeah man i'm excited about that there's been some other stuff in between that let's see that was uh that was the fort this that was cities of gold and then i had uh jumped right onto the i randomly jumped onto the roast battle i never Dude. been a part of any of the roast battles i just was supposed to do a guest set um but evan asked me to judge it as well and gosh i had fun doing that dude i had more fun judging it than i had just doing a guest set to be yeah. honest with you because that's when i got to improv and get loose and joke around with all my buddies and dude like you know we know each other so well that we could joke around we know each other so well that even though i didn't wasn't like didn't prepare any material or any roast jokes 
I was lucky enough to be able to like see my buddies on stage and kind of just kind of connect something into the night. And yeah. I had a blast judging that, bro. Off the cuff. That, dude, those are nights where, like, comedy's the shit, man. Like, it was so fun. Even everybody in the crowd's going uh, crazy. Like, And, you know, with that crowd, you could tell they were they wanted to see the roast. Like, the guest sets all went okay, but they were dying for the roasts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I think that was a that was a fun pl- I like to see themed shows. I want to see more themed shows in, in Albuquerque. Now that um, Cannabis Goes Wreck, I would love to do like a cannabis version of comedian power hour or something related to that. I think that'd be a fun, like maybe something to do with, like the farmer's market shows to try out something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So shout out. That was a blast. Um, and then what was right after that? We just kept staying busy. And I think right after that was, a uh, new altitude and, Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. Right after that, we already talked about it was the four corner comedy festival. So thanks again for, for all the love out there, I'll be back in Durango October 25th. So I got a stacked, that's a stacked weekend. We got Cities of Gold Friday, Albuquerque Funny Fiesta Saturday, and then that Monday I'm shooting back up to Durango and I'm headlining a little, just a Monday night show out there. And, and that's at uh, Starlight Lounge. So any of the Durango friends, come on out. That's going to be a fun one too. Josh is going to be coming up with me. Okay. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, so the new attitude, that was actually something I did just this week. So I did a nice little local TV show called the new attitude, almost like a morning TV show in a way, but it was cool. Cause it was a little bit looser with what you could talk about. We kind of like, you could joke around and not be as, as like PG PC, yeah. you know what I mean? You super a teleprompter in front exactly. of you. Exactly. We got a little bit more wild. Like the host opened with her doing like a skit about like nut sacks. Like I was like, okay, well, I guess I could be a little wild. I could, I could at least show a little bit. Of so that was a new attitude. That's going to be on Comcast channel 27 this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And if you look at my Instagram, um, you could also, there's a link where you could also follow it. Um, but I think that'll air saturday nice. um so basically I, the reason i brought that up is it's a cool local show but i was on it to pr- uh, promote the albuquerque funny fiesta um but it was fun because i was on there for the whole hour like i didn't just jump in and do a little quick segment she brought me in um basically right away she did like an opening brought me in i sat on the couch we and we went back and forth man this host was cool her name was candace new that's why it's the new attitude okay and um i didn't remember but she had booked me for a a show over during COVID, I did this like fun roast of a of a theater kid who was going off to college. Me and Josh just roasted, basically did sets and roasted him. Um, it was actually really fun. It was one of those odd shows you kind of forget about. And um, we were going back and forth, and we start, she started roasting me, so I started kind of cooking her up. And then she's like, "You don't even remember me." She's like, "I've seen, I've booked you for comedy." She's like, "I've seen your comedy," and then she reminded me, and I felt so embarrassed that I didn't uh. recognize her. But she was super cool, dude. Like. We were joking around to the point where I was like calling like her show the wrong name and stuff. And I, at one point I was like, I called her Ellen DeGeneres cause she has like a, you know, like a short little haircut. Like it, we were having a blast. So um, check that out. It's a great promotion, not only for the funny fiesta, but we talked about local comedy a lot as nice. well. So all over the place doing stuff everywhere. And um, it doesn't end bro. Like we're going to put this out right away. So sorry guys for the hiatus. Sorry. It's going to drop on the regular Sunday, but we're just going to try to get back to our schedule. But this weekend I am so pumped. I don't even think we talked about it yet, but I am opening for Chris Catan in uh, Roswell. Yeah. Friday, Saturday night, two shows. And this was one, you know, I've only done it a few times where I've gotten to open up for people. I'm legit fans of, and I remember being a kid. I mean, dude, Chris Catan night at the Roxbury. I mean, I remember, my pops taking me to see Corky Romano and me just thinking it was so funny. Like he, he was physical. He was kind of weird. Like, you know, a lot of weird elements that I kind of relate to. Yeah. So Chris Catan, man, I am psyched. He is bringing, um, a guest of him, but I am opening and hosting the shows. I still did to do a nice feature. Um, I love this venue. It's in Roswell. It's called the Liberty theater. Um, they do a bunch of music there, but here every now and then they do comedy. I've done one uh, weekend out there and it was amazing. They had about 250 people at each show. Um, just a blast, bro. So I am psyched. You know, Chris Catan, Saturday Night Live cast member. One of the first times I'm really excited to open up to someone I've been a fan for. And it's also one of those comedians you don't expect. Like, okay. you know, he's a comedic actor. I didn't even really know he did stand up, but it's like, it's different if it was like someone. I'm a fan of that's really active, which would still be huge. 
But when you have these like unexpected names, like oh shit, like I never would have even expected meeting this person, much less working with them. Yeah, doing stand up. Yeah, so I'm super excited. My pops is rolling with me. So got the old school road dog on the road again. Nice. Bro, the, those trips with my dad are my favorite. And I cherish those moments because I know, you know how it is. Our parents are getting older. I know my pops ain't always going to be around. And even as he gets older, he's not always going to be able to take these trips. Yeah. So anytime he could come with me for a weekend, it is fun. Um, I really enjoy his company, man. I'm glad we're close. I'm glad he supports the comedy. It is um, it's my favorite thing to do, bro. We roll around smoke up eat good food we'll hit the gym like my pops is the eat that's what i like is he's the easiest going he's not high maintenance like anything you want to do or not do he's there for it. he's down for he's it, not yeah. like oh like he's not complaining he's easy company yeah, which yeah. makes it great because when you're on the road i'm already driving i'm already dealing with like you know the performance your head your mind's already in other places like i'm not just going to roswell to check out a ufo museum and you know freaking get a little alien hat like yeah especially when you have to go from one place to the other so it's good to have when you're doing work and if you do bring a friend a family member you know a, a partner whatever it is you want you want to take someone that's low maintenance man because you're you got to still work you still got to work and work in usually rooms that you're not used to yeah so um i am psyched bro roswell and then you know like i said then we got everything else coming up october's just going to be a blast yeah there's going to be a lot of cool shit october's going to be a blast so that's basically the catch up, bro. That's kind of where we're at. What's coming up? You know, I'm, you know, feeling a lot kind of like more level. Um, I guess I could talk about this. Gosh, I mean, it's a little, it's a little soon. Um, but I did have a meeting today with another company. It's not really comedy related, more personal life. But I did a, have a meeting with another company that offered me a job and I'm going to take it. Yeah. Um, I decided that today. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I've been with the company, you know. If you know me in the personal life, I work in the medical cannabis field here. I've been working in the cannabis industry for about 10 years now. I've done it all from, you know, I've literally like done everything you do in the cannabis industry. I've grown, extracted, done sales. I've worked on the smoke shop side of stuff. I've worked on the grow shop side of stuff. Um, you know, and now for Mountaintop, I've done everything from them and that's the company, you know, I'm with. So but it's time for a change, man. I've got you know, a better job opportunity. And like we just talked about, comfort zones. I think you know this company has been great, but they, I think I'm just so comfortable there that I'm not looking to better my day job situation. Yeah. And I think it's time where I get out of that comfort zone again. And if there's a better opportunity, take that shit. Don't regret it. Like, no regrets, man. Don't just stick around in that job because it's easy, that, that path because it's easy. So... I'm excited. Hopefully, you know, like I said, a lot of new things, dude. So going to be starting a new day job. Comedy's cooking. I'm looking for a new venue in Albuquerque. I haven't really talked about that yet. It's another thing. Um, we've been doing canteen for about three years now, which is wild to think of, dude. Um, I'm very proud of it. I've had some of my favorite comedy times. It's the one show in Albuquerque where my people could come out and, you know, see a, a you know a show that i'm proud of that i i put together that they know of but once again going back to like this the whole i guess um kind of center point of this pod right now is like comfort zones like i'm comfortable at canteen but is it the best setup for comedy no we're indoor outdoor on a patio the tables are turned every which way the audience is never like fully directly in front of you engaged as well um you know because it's open the you know the audio just goes into th it's just um it's been great um but at the same time it's time to up the quality be more professional and find a venue that's more accommodating for an audience and still provide all the elements you need that you can still get beer or liquor or still get food and you know bathrooms aren't where they're going to be walking past the comedian stuff like that i'm looking for um, so that's another thing, man. So yeah, so right now it's just cities of gold, um, canteens on pause, looking for another venue, um, cities of gold's rocking. I'm proud of it. It's, you know, in Santa Fe. So it's only an hour away. So if people in Albuquerque still really want to take it out, check it out, they could take a cruise. It's a great opportunity to get a hotel room in Santa Fe, make a day of it, take the rail runner to Santa Fe. And then you could like Uber to the show, something like that. You could really make a day out of it and make it fun. Visit northern New Mexico, a little bit different. It's fun. So um, 
Yeah, dude, there are so many changes. Something. Like this is the biggest quick changes of, of my life that everything's good. And kind of last year I went through a lot of changes too. So it's funny. It's like, bam, a lot of changes. Boom. If, you know, a year later in the fall, you know, a bunch of changes again, but that's what, that's what grows you, man. Yeah. And I've always thought it was, it was kind of interesting too, how like you have two chances for like a resolution. You could either go like the new years and be like, I'm starting over doing it again. Or you could do it on your birthday yeah. and just like, I'm starting over again. So you can never always, you always have a chance to restart, always do it over. It people always, fuck, always, I don't know, people always fuck around and things like that. So, yeah, dog. So, I'm happy, you know, we're gonna get back. We're gonna, we talked about working on some content. Um, we have some, we're gonna really get back on track with the pod for you guys. I actually really was happy to he that people were hitting me up. When's the pod coming? When's the pod coming? I love listening to the pod in the morning. I was so happy to hear that. And, you know, whether it's fans, friends, whatever you want to call it, like, I really was psyched because I was feeling kind of bummed, man. When I don't, when I'm not on point with my stuff, I feel it. So I was like, God dang, like I'd hit up on hell and you'd be like, it's okay, bro. We'll get back on track and, you know, reassure me that we'd be good. And, and I know everybody needs to take a break. I know the homies and the, and the listeners will understand. And we're still growing, bro. We're barely like, you know, we're barely few, like I said, 14 or so episodes in. Um, the rule is we don't know what we're doing to episode 100. So we're shooting for that, guys. We're pushing for sure. It takes time. And what what would Fiend City be if we didn't just disappear like a fiend for a few weeks? Yo? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like that's some real, like Al we went MIA, real downtown Albuquerque style. I just disappeared. Shit's got to be done. It is what it is, bro. I'm psyched. There's been a lot going on, um, but comedy's still been kicking. It's still been growing great. Um, everything's good, so... I know you said you had a vid that you wanted me to check out, so I'm kind of like I've been in suspense a little bit. Yeah, there's some pretty funny stuff. Uh, I thought this was interesting because I don't know uh, uh, the cops are a pretty interesting group of people, right? They're pretty Gosh. smart, right? They're smart people. Yeah, they have to pass a lot of IQ tests to get their jobs yes. and things that they're doing. They have so, to pass all the tests. So this is just a video of a cop pursuing a vigilante. A vigilant. Per, a per, okay. Per, pursuing Alanti. somebody in pursuing somebody in a, in a van. A lanty. We used to just call them lanties. Right. right yeah. Yeah. In there. But yeah. This is this is it. Like literally. I'm not gonna get copyright stricken, but this is just this looks like Albert Kirby too. Like, like literally. They're literally playing merry-go-round. Oh, That's what, this is what's going on for a minute. At this, this is place. like some carnival circus. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. He's just trying to buy time. He's like, fuck, what do we do? We're gonna hide shit. Right. <laughs> What's going on? That is so ridiculous, bro. The best part is if, like, the van door opened and just, like, 30 people climbed out, like, full clown, just, like, full circus style. And, and then he takes off. That's the best. <laughs> That's the best. And he kind of, like, got a... He kind of did trick him a little. He did get a little jump on him a bit. That was... So he had some fun there for oh a second. Oh, my gosh, dude. People are outlandish. So I thought that was funny. I was just like, God damn it. One of those videos. Um, I do have another one here. Have you ever seen uh, Amazon deliver packages? Have you seen Amazon you know, deliver you know what? packages? I mean, I've seen a couple dash cams or like a couple door cams, I guess, where, I mean, I've seen fun, like the sweet ones, but I've also seen ones where they just toss them and don't give a f fuck, bro. Oh, you're gonna get they ready. don't give a shit. And so, get ready for this all right, one, let's dude. see this one. A blimp? Dude, this is them delivering packages right now, dude. Are you serious? Dude. Is that a Zeppelin? Dude. That's a blimp. <laughs> what I don't get- Oh, and those are drones. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, we really are stepping <laughs> into the future, bro. Tell me that's not his future. That is some full thought, Star Wars shit. Dude, You're I right. thought that was so crazy. I was that like, is wild, oh, shit, man. man. That is really crazy. That bugs me. You ever look at someone and wonder? <laughs> and this is what's even crazier. We have Amazon located in our area. Yeah. I wonder if we have enough, like, I mean, obviously there's enough shipping in any somewhat big city for them. But I wonder if we'll see one of those float. Imagine the balloon fiesta. And you just see this Amazon dropping off packages and shit. And you're oh, just like, what the fuck is going on? Because only in here we'd be like, oh, hot air balloon, cool. Like, show me something real interesting. You know what I think though? They don't do it in states where they have legal gun laws. 
<laughs> Why, dude? Everyone's just gonna go out trying to shoot down drones, dude. I guess drones, you're right. You're right. I guess I never thought about that. So yeah, just, especially for people trying to steal packages. I never thought about right? that. Right? They're just like, holy shit, that's a nice package. There's just some dude in Arizona dressed up like the sand people from Star Wars. like, <laughs> And then he's just like, yeah, he's just, just trying to it. snipe in the Sahara, just wherever. <laughs> just so hot. Oh, man. Okay. It's a donut. Okay, here we go. I got one more for you. This one's pretty funny. We love little kids. Little kids. Little kids just like to get crunk and have a good time. Small adults. This is them. Amateur adults. This is them having fun. You ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? You remember, I remember that specific. That's a funny take on that ride. Because I remember that ride in in the parks, like it being a kid. Right. But I remember it being bullshit, bro. Like I don't know if I was too like chubby, like I was a fat kid, so I couldn't get the rock going. Like, but you I ever look at someone straight. and wonder just like, this what is, is going on so. inside their head? I like her. Game Oh yeah, old school. Like the older the <laughs> playgrounds get, let's let's go to the side touch it. So now I feel like playgrounds are being canceled. <laughs> know, right? That's the next thing. Like jungle gyms are freaking, like you know what I mean. No jungle gyms in school. Like who's I think, gonna be doing this? I feel like before you know it, there's gonna be no jungle gyms, no anything, no Reese dodgeball for sure is already not a thing. Like schools are getting so soft. And I remember when we were kids, park things were like legit dangerous. Like swings used to have the highest, dude. You could swing, you know, you bro, you could slingshot yourself to Santa Fe on, on a elementary school, you know, recess right. part. <laughs> like they were freaking long. Remember, you would jump, bro. You would fly. How were we not breaking our legs left and right? It was crazy. Because like, you would get as high as you can in the swing. Do you remember there were people even like flip it over? How are we not breaking our necks all the time? That shit was dope. And I'm sure there was more people that probably have like swing accidents. Than I thought, but that doesn't. Stop there, bro. Our jungle gyms were wild, just full made out of metal. Like you don't even sh see shit like this at CrossFit gyms. Yeah, like right. they were wild jungle gyms, dude. <laughs> it was something else, bro. Three tier levels. Oh yeah, they'd be over concrete. <laughs> You're like, is this legal? Like, you know what I mean? And uh, dude, the merry-go-rounds were so intense. Like the steel ones, bro. Just sharp edges, bro. They were they were like you would hold on. I remember like you'd have people spin them. Oh yeah, and like you a would group of people fly, bro. And so, like, yeah, yeah, bring in, like, bring in, like, merry-go-round, um, like, accident. Hopefully not, no, nothing too vicious. <laughs> Something's bleeding or Nothing too head. vicious. Or, like, <laughs> merry-go-round PGX. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, stunt or something. Because I feel like so much crazy stuff goes on with merry-go-rounds. Like, bro, you would get, I still remember the the fear. Like, you would never, it was, you were never excited. You were always straight up afraid because you would get on. You would hug onto the pole for dear. Everybody had a different tech. Okay, are we trying to find little kids doing this? No, like no, no, idiots? no, no. That's what I say. See, see if there's like an adult one. There's one. That's what I'm saying. The there's one. Looks like adults that are trying to kill themselves. There's one with a guy, and he uses a motorcycle. Uh, there's three of them right now. Bring up one of those because I don't think okay. they're like. I don't think the outcome's that bad, but it looks wild, bro. Okay, we'll do this. So do we, remember, as a kid, already like this was just hand toss. Okay, so this is already a problem. The video comes up and it says this may be inappropriate for some viewers. Okay, bring, bring. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Don't play. Let's just like screenshot right away. Hit it. Uh, you okay. guys, we're stepping in an uncharted territory. See, you guys, you see what we have to deal with over here? We're really trying to bring it back in this episode and show you some shit. All right, already? Here we go. So we're going to screen it first. We'll screen we're going to screen it. We'll screen it. We're going to screen, we're it, gonna screen it for you guys. We're going to make sure we don't we don't want to play our, our, our thing right away and then get flagged. We want to get three strikes, guys. So there's three dudes hugging the center, and this guy's actually using a moped back tire, and he's revving it up, and he's and this Mario Ground is picking up speed. They're probably, they're they're cooking right now. What do you think? You know this is like that fair ride where you stick to the walls, like you know shit. You that can see alien the, ship. Yeah. You can see their legs start to go, bro. You can see them like, oh my god, like, oh 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 oh. Oh, we might have to, oh we might have to, we, we might have anything. to cut, we like, we didn't show anything. <laughs> we didn't, all, was, all we showed was just our reaction, dude. That's all that was on there, dude. Oh, they saw, dude. Oh, my God. 
That uh, okay. Oh my god. Even for like the first forty seconds, I was like, oh "This my. is cool." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No it wasn't problem. bad at all. No it wasn't problem. bad at all. And then it got really bad. I can't believe and then it got really bad, huh? Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. This yeah. I'm sorry, guys. We can't show you that. <laughs> that is vicious, though, dude. Let us know if you want us to make a Patreon. That guy's we'll legs turned into linguine, bro. His legs turned to linguine. You, you think something might have been broken? Not even all dente, fully fucking guini, bro. <laughs> he was guinied, bro. Just straight up. Oh, well, dude, his shin bones just turned into stardust, brother. I would not imagine somebody oh. getting up from that. I cannot. Oh. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, gyms used to be hardcore. Now there's there's definitely not those in gyms and in, in parks anymore. There's no way. And, like, bring up this. This is even crazier. When gym na- – I remember seeing this when I was younger. When park – like, park – recess setups were even in the, the early days bring up like put in um recess or play playground from like 1930 or something bro these were death traps they're they're like 40 foot high monkey bars they are basically still framing that they let kids play on so you can see how how shit just got. dude okay first of all i'm pretty sure this is at least what 17 feet high oh yeah my yeah, God. yeah this is real shit the playgrounds used to be wild they were worse than american ninja courses they were literally and these were in elementary schools okay uh the, we won't show a lot of this footage but okay just show us a good like old school part oh you have a video yeah well they're gonna be pictures okay of them okay so here's here's so here's, that's not too bad long slide you know what i mean but some of these like are crazy Okay, uh, this, this one. one the, this one's a weird. Look at this. This is one. Stop it here. Stop it here. <laughs> this is wild, bro. This is the like, kid is literally twenty feet off the okay, ground. <laughs> let's talk about this first. They're not even on a. Though they're so high on the swing, dude. And that's not one kid just in a swing. That's two kids standing. Oh well, yeah. That's wild. That's six kids. Definitely one of those kids didn't make it out of that grade <laughs> without a broken neck. Right. Bro. One of those kids snapped a neck, and they're oh my gosh, it's so crazy. And then literally. Right under and next to them, so close, is kids walking on steel beams. Tell me this isn't an American. Can I just point out this warrior. kid right here? That's just so fucking. He's only one. Like, what the fuck are they allowing us to do? Can, he can, knew. Can I not play up there? Yeah, he knew. No adults, like on the, you know, maybe one. Like, no. All these kids look like they're supposed to be like working on a train, doing something that's illegal. Yeah, this shit's crazy and a little spooky. Let's be honest. Look at this one, dude. Look at this, dude. Is that Look, this kid's falling? That kid's. This is what we're talking about. Look at that kid in the middle, bro. He's just up there. Oh, this dude. Oh, these ones. Look, this kid climbed up there, dude. Look bro, at firefighters that. these days can't even shimmy poles like this. <laughs> I know, bro. This is. Look, these are literally firefighter training. Like they're climbing ladders. Like these kids are efficient. Where are these kids in ROTC? This Jesus. is crazy. This is military dude. training. Look how high up this. Look, go back just a second. The to go, to go all the way up right in the middle. That kid's standing, standing. <laughs> and he's gonna walk down this. That's crazy. He's gonna isn't walk it? down That's this. That's crazy. Look, this kid already made it halfway Dude, there. Th- this this playground, these are six, seven to like ten year olds. This playground makes the crate challenge look like bullshit. Right? What are you guys doing crating over? There's here? a kid falling from thirty feet in this picture. <laughs> His body is just free falling. And he survived perfectly. I don't even know what that is. That's yeah. crazy. It has to be some weird cedar saw. Look at this. These slides. Man, those metal slides are the worst too. Those metal slides just eat up your cheeks, bro. Yeah, the, bro, these are just death traps. Still, just still over concrete. Look at this. this is literally army, military. Yeah, this is literally just World War II training videos. <laughs> for video. This is what I'm talking about, man. This is where we came from, and now you can't even have almond butter in an elementary school. This is where kids came from, and now you can't even have a peanut butter and jelly. You can't even have an Uncrustable. Bro, they used to serve us Uncrustables every day. Right now, 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 what's going on? Kids were flying out, just flying out of swings like they were the Wright brothers, just taking chances. I'm dude. pretty sure that was one of the Wright no, brothers. Oh, it had to have been, dog. <laughs> it's like my first flight. <laughs> oh, this is why. This is why there was real patriots back in the day, and now everybody's just softy softs, bro. But it's a hard time, man. Oh, that is, bro. I can't even believe this is where we came from. Yeah, so recess was wild, dog. 
freeze tag a where you at ta- fun time man have you ever seen there's actually competitions for fr- uh, those are tag, crazy like tag it's like compet- tag parkour yeah they just have this intense obstacle it's intense court. but it's like also find something better to do come on <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? like what's going on here it's like you how did you make like something athletic look like nerdy like they make parkour look nerdy yeah they're just like why don't you just go out in the streets and film yourself <laughs> oh dude it's hardcore tag though i'll give them that they do I want to see the accidents. You only see, like, the really good... I've never seen, like, where they slip and, like, you know they have to eat it on those courses once in a while. Oh, man. Practice makes perfect, right? Oh, that's scary. Oh, that is fucking wild, bro. A- any comments on the, sh- the the Facebook and Instagram outage of 2021? Were you part of it? Did you Yeah, bro, I don't know it? what's going on. Facebook and Instagram going out more, you know... They go, they go out more than my back does at this point. You know what I mean? And, and you know me, bro. I need a backyotomy. I'm out here. I'm backyotomy. <laughs> but um, no, that was weird, dude. Um, I think a lot of people were fucked up because I think when that happened, immediately I was like, is my service out? Everybody like, is creep, freaking yeah, out. Yeah, because I the- didn't realize that first I was at work and I tried to refresh my shit and I was like, hmm. First of all, in my unit at work, I don't get phone service. So I already only get like Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, there's just shit service in that little metal box. Oh, uh, okay. That they have us in, and uh, so um, I, so I was tripping out. I was like, damn, maybe, <laughs> you know, it's an, it's an Albuquerque. So right away, so did I pay my bill? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. So I, and then I, you know, finally, you know, looked it up and stuff, and yeah, dude, outage. Just it's really weird to see a huge app like that that so many people rely on also for business and stuff oh dude it was so crazy right away i was like not only because it was it was instagram facebook messenger it was whatsapp i don't use whatsapp but i use all the other three and i was like emailing i was you know talking to comedians and bookers on messenger that i couldn't talk to that day um you know i had stuff to promote it it was weird and then about two like an hour or two in it felt a little freeing you're like ah i guess like it'll come back on whenever like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, stop che- kind of checking and stuff. But, uh, yeah, that shit was weird, dude. Especially with all the other, like, social medias and stuff. Like, I went to Twitter and right away. The memes were hilarious. And they just bash on the, all the other ones. And it's like, wow, this is a fucking yeah. capitalistic thing where they're just like, ah, you guys messed up. And now we're going to take it advantage of it. It is kind of funny because I feel like TikTok and Twitter, for as big as they still are, maybe, and I know it's regional where some of these are more popular than others. But I feel in New Mexico, Albuquerque, in, in in this specific region, it's Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. You know, I know I use Instagram as like my main platform, Facebook. I have a TikTok. I barely use it. Yeah. Um, And so I think it's so funny that I guess like the secondary social media platforms were the ones to be like, yo, we're the ones that got this shit together. Like, get your shit together. Like. It's almost like if Apple went out or like Nike went down or something, you know, it's like the, see, it's a huge company. So yeah. I really tripped out on that, bro. I uh, thought it was crazy. I, of course, a lot of people are like going to conspiracies. They're like, oh, well, there were hiding there were, a kinds of shit. They're yeah, deleting shit. Exactly. They're like, oh, well, there was a uh, Facebook employees that were testifying the day before and they're trying to scrub. I'm like, gosh, I mean, you think Facebook and Instagram being along this long, they've worked perfectly forever. They have one hiccup for three hours. You guys fucking, it, it reminded me of like Heath Ledger and it's like, you know, like something goes wrong and everybody loses their fucking mind. Right. Like They switch yeah. roles right away. Yeah. So Jump it was shit. kind of a trip for sure. You know, I had a hard time promoting stuff that day and getting back on track. Even when things came back on, I'm like, still flaky. should I wait? Yeah, like before no. I start putting stuff back Is up a little work? bit. Is it yeah. going to work? Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, that was weird, bro. That was definitely weird. I just love the headline where it's just like, the outage turned people's lives upside down. Oh, God, people, <laughs> and that's how hungry the news is for a segment, bro. That really goes to show you, if your news, if your world was turned upside down because you couldn't check your, your feed for three hours. Like, what's really going on? gotta tighten it up. That's horrible. I gotta tighten it up. Well, we, we, uh, we're there. You know what, I was, I, I, bro, we what's are that? fucking here. We're, we're here. Because I was just going to say it's getting late. I still got work in the morning. I just wanted to catch. That's so perfect, bro. I just wanted to catch up on the pod, and we got a full episode in for you guys. Yeah. So um, we'll be dropping this ASAP. Yeah, this is going to come out quickness, and then we're going to get back on schedule. Um, we'll have a guest on the next one. I'm trying to maybe get Sarah on or someone to you know talk about 
the, the funny, funny fiesta, fiesta a little yeah. bit because they told me to if i can try to promote it as exactly. much as i can on the so podcast. maybe we'll, we'll cut out that segment and send it to them because they asked as well and uh yeah dude we'll keep rocking thank you guys for continuing to listen um sorry we had our hiatus everyone needs a break here and there but we're here we got you guys we're all killing it together yo you guys fiend city podcast peace yo yo huh oh. and we're out here uh uh and we're back and we're back 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 and we're back in action uh let's go let's go let's go let's go it's all swell it's all so on hell uh 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 yo bro thank you see you guys soon peace